Hey, what's up guys? Paulo Munoz here. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to recreate the giant sandworm from the movie Dune or the Shai Hulu. Um, we're going to create this in ZBrush using a bunch of different tips and tricks that you can use to recreate the same sort of like fan art work uh, like I'm going to show you or, you know, they're applicable to the techniques that I'm going to show you are applicable to a bunch of different things. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here is my final concept art. This is what I uh, what I did with the techniques that I'm going to show you. Uh, obviously, this has the render and a, li a little bit of post processing and a couple of extra effects. But uh, generally speaking, the, everything that you see here was done in ZBrush. All the concept, the character, the sand dunes, and this is basically what I'm going to cover in these uh, tutorial videos. So let's just go ahead and jump into the ZBrush file. All right, so here we are in ZBrush, and here is the scene. As you can see, we have the worm, uh, all those like intricate teeth, and all of that. It's all done in ZBrush. I'm going to show you how. Uh, and a tiny little character and the sand dune. So we're going to start with the worm. I'm going to go ahead and click on Preferences. I'm going to initialize ZBrush so that we can start from scratch. I'm also going to go ahead and change my configuration to the standard UI just so that you can follow along. I'm also going to go to Preferences. I'm going to go to the thumbnail, turn that off, and the Canvas as well. I'm going to turn that off. And just to reset the document so we can work a little bit better, I'm going to click on Document, uh, New Document. And I'm going to remove this range. I don't like that gradient. I'm going to click on double just like so I can work on a larger document. And we're going to click on the tool palette and select a cylinder 3D, this one right here. All right, let's click and drag, press the T to enter edit mode. And I'm going to switch to a different material, something like the basic material. All right, so the point here is that we're going to start with something or, or like a very basic geometry that uh, resembles what we're going to create. So in this case, the worm is basically uh, an elongated cylinder. So we can bring in the gizmo 3D and we can go ahead and scale that, something like that. I mean, the, the entire worm, like if you want to create something and see the entire worm, you probably want to do something a little bit larger than this. Uh, but because I'm going to do mine kind of like, you know, coming out of the of the sand dunes, uh, it doesn't have to be that long. Uh, but if you want, you can totally go ahead and keep scaling this to make it really long. So I think something like this uh, works quite well. And I'm gonna go ahead and go back to draw. And because I scale it in the Y axis, I'm also gonna go to the deformation palette and click unify. So what the unify button does in ZBrush is to scale whatever you have selected to the ideal size that ZBrush likes to work with, which is um, a two by two by two units. So everything that I have right now here now fits in that sort of like two by two by two. All right, so that's pretty much the setup. We can now go ahead and start working on our worm. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the geometry palette. And because we haven't actually converted this into a poly mesh or something that we can actually edit or sculpt in, uh, we don't see that many options in here. So all we have to do is go to the make poly mesh 3D and you see everything appears and we can just go ahead and start you know, sculpting as normal. Um, you might also see that, I mean, it's kind of like hard to see in the recording, but I have like some jagged lines, especially on diagonals. Uh, around the edges. That is because of the size of the document. So that is the reason why I increase my document size. So if I click on A, I have, or in other words, uh, seeing half of the document, a lot of those lines disappear and we have like a cleaner look. So this is just a little trick to work with uh, cleaner lines or, or cleaner models in your canvas. So uh, just double the size of the document and work at A, I have, or half of the document. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll down to the Dynamesh palette, this one right here, and I'm gonna click on Dynamesh with 128. So 128 is pretty decent. We're gonna start with something pretty low. I'm gonna also enable the polyframe so that you can see. So it's a pretty low uh, resolution, but this is all we need so that we can start blocking things out. Now the trick here so that we can speed up the process is to work with radial symmetry. So let's go ahead and take the transform palette, dock that to the right hand side as well. And I'm gonna click on activate symmetry. So that activates the symmetry so we can work on both sides, so that's pretty good. But what I want to do is also click on this R, which activates the radial symmetry. And because this is kind of like pointing upwards, we need to change the axis from X to Y. So now, if I go ahead and do this, you see I can uh, sculpt with symmetry. So that's the, the first thing that I want to do. Um, another thing that you can do, you see uh, the number right here is eight. That corresponds to the eight sort of instances of that brush. We can increase that to something like 16, for example. And then we have a bit more accuracy. Right? You can keep doing this um, you know, in increments like 32 and 64, that sort of thing, uh, and work a little bit faster. But I think 16, for especially for this type of resolution, is plenty. All right, I'm going to turn off the polyframe now so that we don't see any colors there. And I'm going to use the control key. And this is one of the, the cool things about the radius symmetry. You can work with uh, most of the tools. So there we go. So this is going to be the kind of like the mouth of the worm. So I'm going to invert that mask, bring in the gizmo. I'm going to center it to the unmask areas and I'm going to just push that in. All right. 
not too much again um you you don't necessarily need to go all the way in you don't see that much anyway uh, and most of this is going to be covered by the teeth anyway so something like that is fine let's hold control click and drag and let's do it again control click and drag to redynamesh and there we go so we have plenty of polygons to work with perfect i think at this stage what i'm going to do is smooth everything out so we can go to the deformation palette and we can use something like polish there we go something to simplify it um, and at this point that we have the the basics of the block already we can go ahead and increase the dynamic resolution so i'm going to increase that by maybe to something like 500 click and drag to redynamesh and we should have more resolution perfect let's go ahead and run another polish from the deformation palette there we go and we can now literally start sculpting this worm so what i want to do is start with the standard brush and i'm going to use the alt key to push in just to add a bit of that concave region here in the mouth and also pressing the shift key just to smooth things a little bit and also with the standard brush i'm going to push kind of like the outer rim to create a, a bit of a thinner line here and smooth things out perfect so i think this is working quite well um there's not a lot of uh, complicated shapes that you need to do with with a worm it's ultimately just a, a cylinder with some things but um, i think this you know give you an idea. Uh, maybe what we can do is just increase the size and maybe reduce the intensity and add a couple of variation around there, just, uh, yeah, just to change the kind of like the smoothness of the inner mouth maybe. And we could do the same thing in the outside, something like that. Again, you can just make up your, your own worm, <laughs> your own uh, design. Okay, something like that. Now, the other thing I want to do is switch to the damp standard brush. So I'm going to press B, D, S, and that is the shortcut for the damp standard brush. And I'm just going to do something like this just to cut the worm in some areas. It's not going to be perfect. I mean, you can do it a little bit more thorough than what I'm doing right now, uh, but this is just to create that sort of section of the worm. And then I'm going to switch back to the standard brush, B, S, T, and I'm going to add a little bit of volume towards the kind of like the left hand side or the kind of like the, the bottom part of each section so that it feels like each section sort of fits within the next. And because I have the radial symmetry, it's a, you know, it's a pretty simple thing to do. There we go. Now, um, this looks a little bit too obvious, like that I'm kind of like forcing this. Uh, so what I can do is go to the clay brush, so B, C, L, and just add a little bit of clay, kind of like to refine the transition. So probably this one would be a good example. So I'm just gonna add some clay. So you see that the transition now from this sort of back area into the next is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit softer. So that's what I'm looking for. All right, so I'm just gonna do that with all of these pieces. All right, and you can spend a little bit more time uh, doing this, but as you can see, we have something that, you know, gives us an enough, uh, enough room to play with. Now, in my case, if I bring in my concept, uh, you see that I have kind of like the, um, these sort of pointy bits, like three, of the main pointy bits around the around the head, um, that is kind of like to differentiate the the age of the worm. Um, the the original Dune had like you know very prominent sort of um, I don't know peaks or, or lips or whatever this is uh, for the worm. Uh, and in the the most recent one uh, from these and the previous years, uh, you know it's it's a little bit different. So I'm just going kind of like an in between or closer to the to the recent movie anyway. So um, to do that. Hopefully this makes sense, but to do that, I want to bring in the move brush, so BMV. And this is the type of thing that you can do. Uh, you can make like crazy cool things just with the, you know, with the fact that you're using the radial symmetry, you can press the alt key and push and create something like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go to the radial symmetry, change this from 16 to 3. And from the top, I'm going to try to make this as, you know, as center as possible. And you'll see why in a second. So kind of like looking at the middle line in here, and I'm going to push this like so. And if you want to create something a little bit more pointy, uh, you can go to the brush palette with the move brush selected and go to curve and click on AccuCurve. That way when you push, it's going to be very, very pointy. All right. So because I only have three in my radial count, I can just push this like so. And let's just go ahead and open those a bit more. All right, cool. So that's, um, that's a good starting point. Let's go ahead and do maybe some variation here. Again, you can just play around with your own design. I think this works quite well. All right, so the next thing is to keep increasing the resolution. So let's go to Dynamesh, increase that a little bit more. Control, click, and drag. So we have a thousand, um, a value of thousand in the resolution, and we can use something like the standard brush again, maybe with a smaller brush size, um, 
And I'm going to keep the radial count at 3. And I'm going to start adding maybe some, some more definition towards the edge. And maybe add a little bit of variation here as well. Kind of like wrinkles or, or folds around the mouth. All right, something like that. Cool. 